Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Jonathan Clinthorne, and I'm here on behalf of Atkins Nutritionals. Today, I want to discuss two major points. The first is that while it has been stated that the 2020 dietary guidelines are intended for the general population, the general population is not healthy. 72% of American adults are overweight or obese. 52% have prediabetes or diabetes. Therefore, by excluding studies from your systematic reviews that enroll participants in a treatment diet, you are effectively not producing guidelines for the general population, something suggested by the National Academy's report. Ultimately, that's well over 100 million people who are not receiving relevant eating guidance. It's also important to recognize that despite the fact that the guidelines are intended for the general healthy population, they are most definitely influencing nutrition recommendations for people who are not considered healthy. Let me give some examples. The guidelines inform school lunch programs. Current data indicates one in five school-aged children has obesity, while about 20% of adolescents are estimated to have prediabetes. They also inform nutrition recommendations for the Department of Veterans Affairs and feeding programs for the elderly. And yet the prevalence of type 2 diabetes is higher in veterans than it is in the general population, and nearly one in three are considered obese. Meanwhile, one in four elderly people are estimated to have type 2 diabetes, and 48% of people 65 and older have prediabetes. The guidelines also clearly inform the nutrition policy for many medical associations and hospitals, and if these healthcare providers are not guiding people who have diet-related chronic diseases, then who is? The guidelines are clearly being used to provide nutritional recommendations for many people with diet-related chronic diseases, so why not make sure that these guidelines are based on pertinent science? My second point is that during your assessment of dietary patterns, you must accurately define low-carbohydrate diets in order to properly account for this body of research. The USDA has stated that you are inclu considering including studies where less than 45% of energy coming from carbohydrates is qualifying as a low carbohydrate diet because this is outside of the AMDR. I am here to tell you that this is an inaccurate characterization of low carbohydrate diets. We encourage the USDA, USDA to define low carbohydrate diets as containing less than 25% of energy from carbohydrate or 130 grams of carbohydrates per day. This recommendation would be consistent with the adequate intake of 130 grams of carbohydrates per day set by the National Academy. In conclusion, I strongly encourage the advisory, advisory committee to focus on the good of all Americans and accurately define low carbohydrate diets. Thank you. Be sure to hit that subscribe button for more highlights and information about the changing dietary guidelines in 2020, an exclusive analysis you won't find anywhere else on YouTube. And make sure to hit that notification bell too so you don't miss the next video. Y'all know what time it is. Red Pill Vegan. Next.